The last thing we're going to do inside the case is we're going to install the hard disk and the CD-ROM drive. And this is really straightforward. In the case of the hard disk, there is actually a, a bracket that pulls out and it's got four rubber grommets on the bottom of it. And those rubber grommets line up with four holes on the bottom of the hard disk drive. And the case has come with four special screws that are shaped just right to punch through that grommet and, and drill into the bottom of the hard disk drive. So what we're going to do is just put those four screws in and drop the hard disk back into its appropriate slot. Snap, and it's in. Now, there's a set of jumpers on the back that you have to set. Uh, we've taken care of that. You have to supply power to this drive. Any of the power cords that are available coming off the power supply, they all are the same. And if they fit in the hole, then it's good to go. And we need a cable. Now, the case came with a cable. The hard disk came with a cable. On one side of the cable, there's a red stripe, and that marks pin 1. When you look on the motherboard, there's going to be a marker for pin 1 as well. So you just plug it into one of the available uh, IDE connectors, lining the red stripe up with pin 1, and then uh, insert it on the back of the drive, and there's only one way it can go on the back of the drive. With the cable in place, power in place, the jumper set properly, and the screws in place, that drive is secure and ready to go. We're just going to do the same thing with the CD drive. We've already set the jumper. It's going to fit in the front of the case, and we're going to just pop out one of these face plates to make room for it. Slides right in. And it will be obvious how to screw that in, and you just want to align it so that the front face plate closes or so the drive aligns with the other drives on the front. Whatever, you, you just slide it in and out and get it in the right spot. And then the drive came with four screws for cinching it down. All right, so once again, we're going to find a an available power connector. Plug it right in. We're going to take the cable that came with the drive and making sure to put the red stripe in pin one, just push it into the motherboard. Making sure it's seated all the way down in that socket and then uh, plug it into the back of the drive. And there's one extra thing you can do with the CD drive. It'll come with a little special audio cable. And there's a place for it to plug in in the back of the drive, an obvious place for it to plug into the motherboard. And you just hook that up real quick. With the drives in place, all that's left is the video card, and we happen to have our video card right here. This motherboard happens to have an AGP video slot, and we've bought an AGB video card to fit into it. There's only one video slot on a motherboard, so you either look in the manual or just look at the motherboard and find that slot, and then line the card up on both ends and push it into place. There's also on the AGP connector a little thumb slide that, that literally locks it into place and you uh, just grab hold of it and lock it and that board is, is installed. From a hardware perspective, this machine is ready to go. We can button the case up and our next step would be to uh, fiddle with the BIOS settings and load the operating system to create a fully functional machine.